Stanford Prison Experiment, this 1971 study by Philip Zimbardo looked at how people behave in a prison setting. Volunteers were randomly assigned as either guards or prisoners and placed in a mock prison in the basement of Stanford University. The guards quickly began to show controlling, even aggressive behavior, while the prisoners became anxious, passive, and emotionally distressed. Although it was meant to last two weeks, it was stopped after just six days. The results raised concerns about how easily people conform to roles and how environments can influence behavior more than individual personality. Milgram Obedience Experiment Stanley Milgram wanted to understand how far people would go in obeying authority, especially after the events of World War II. In this 1961 study, participants were asked to give electric shocks to someone in another room whenever they answered a question incorrectly. The shocks weren't real, but the participants didn't know that. Even when the person screamed or begged to stop, Many participants kept going because they were told to buy the experimenter. It revealed how people might follow orders, even harmful ones, if they believe the authority figure is responsible. Little Albert Experiment Conducted in 1920 by John B. Watson and Rosalie Rayner, this experiment aimed to show that fear could be learned through association. A nine-month-old baby named Albert was shown a white rat, which he initially liked. Then, each time Albert reached for the rat, a loud noise was made behind him. Eventually, Albert began crying at the sight of the rat, even without the noise. He also reacted fearfully to other white or furry objects. The study showed how phobias might develop, but the researchers never reversed the conditioning and the experiment raised serious concerns about ethics and consent. The Monster Study In 1939, speech pathologists Wendell Johnson and Mary Tudor wanted to explore whether negative feedback could cause stuttering. They worked with orphans, dividing them into two groups. One group was encouraged and praised, while the other was criticized for normal speech patterns. The children in the negative group began showing signs of speech issues and lowered self-esteem. The study did not involve consent, and the emotional harm caused led to long-term criticism. Its nickname, The Monster Study, reflected how many viewed the unethical treatment of vulnerable children. Landis Facial Expressions Experiment In 1924, Carney Landis wanted to identify whether all people make the same facial expressions in response to certain emotions. Participants were exposed to various strong stimuli, like smelling ammonia or watching disturbing images. The most troubling part came when they were asked to decapitate live rats, something many were uncomfortable with, but most still tried due to the pressure. The experiment caused distress but yielded no useful findings, and it's often cited as a case where ethical boundaries were pushed for no clear scientific benefit. David Reimer Case This case began in the 1960s after an infant named David Reimer lost his penis in a failed circumcision. Psychologist John Money suggested David be raised as a girl, believing gender identity was entirely shaped by upbringing. David was renamed Brenda and underwent social and medical conditioning to reinforce a female identity. Throughout childhood, he struggled with confusion and discomfort, and the therapy included deeply inappropriate sessions with his twin brother. David eventually rejected the female identity and transitioned back to male as a teenager, but he continued to experience psychological distress into adulthood. The case became a widely criticized example of unethical interference with identity. Harlow's Monkey Experiments In the 1950s and 60s, Harry Harlow studied attachment in monkeys by separating infants from their mothers. The baby monkeys were given surrogate mothers, one made of wire that provided food and another made of cloth that provided comfort but no nourishment. The monkeys overwhelmingly preferred the cloth mother, showing that emotional comfort played a huge role in attachment. In more severe versions, some monkeys were completely isolated for months, which led to long-term psychological damage. While the studies contributed to our understanding of emotional development, the methods were considered extremely cruel. Learned Helplessness Experiment Martin Seligman's work in 1967 involved placing dogs in a situation where they received electric shocks and couldn't escape. After repeated exposure, the dogs stopped trying to avoid the shocks even when later given the chance. They had learned that nothing they did made a difference. The experiment helped explain 
Why people sometimes feel stuck in negative situations, like in cases of depression or abuse. But the suffering inflicted on the animals made it ethically controversial, especially since the distress was deliberately induced. Rosenhan Experiment In 1973, David Rosenhan tested the reliability of psychiatric diagnoses by sending healthy individuals, called pseudo-patients, into different mental hospitals. Each person claimed they heard voices saying words like empty or thud, but otherwise behaved normally. All were admitted, usually with a diagnosis of schizophrenia, and once inside, none of the staff recognized they were faking. The pseudo-patients had to stay for days or weeks and were treated according to their labels. The experiment exposed major flaws in psychiatric systems, but it also raised ethical concerns about deceiving professionals and disrupting care environments. Blue Eyes versus Brown Eyes Experiment In 1968, Jane Elliott, a teacher, wanted her third grade class to understand prejudice. She divided the children by eye color, telling them that blue-eyed kids were smarter and better. Brown-eyed children were treated as inferior. The kids internalized these roles quickly, with blue-eyed children becoming bossy and brown-eyed children growing quiet and withdrawn. The roles were reversed the next day. While the exercise powerfully demonstrated how discrimination works, it also caused emotional discomfort and remains debated as a teaching method, especially with young children.